So a key factor in this game is definitely going to be the dice roll here because being able to go first with trap tricks and just set up all of the different uh, the, all of the different yep. uh, trap cards is going to be extremely important to be able to stop Cash Tira, which um, I think it's going to kind of struggle potentially dealing with even just something simple like a regular floodgate trap hole, uh, setting the monster to the field. You know, it's uh, it's a lot to contend with when you just have your own booked monster here. And this is one of the best openings you could hope for in Trap yeah. Trick. Just any monster plus Shade Brigadine. This allows you to trigger the effect of Sarah, allowing you to special summon from your deck a Trap Tricks monster. Now, as well, uh, because of the fact that Mermelio, which it looks like what he might be going for here, uh, actually he's going for the new one. Yeah. yeah. Basicul? Yeah. Yeah, so, Basicul, yeah. right? Yeah. By being able to trigger the effect of a Trap card and a Trap Tricks monster simultaneously on the same turn, you're able to benefit from both effects of Sarah. So this should be able to get another Trap card from the deck as well. Yeah, here you go for the XYZ summon of Pinguicula. And uh, I think is this is one of the main reasons why the deck is so consistent, right? Just with a couple of cards, you just put up on the field a lot of pressure to your opponent. And uh, I guess also the deck, as you mentioned before, can allow to play, I mean, a lot of different resources, such as his main deck in three copies of Nibirus as well, which might be very helpful in this matchup, also evenly mm -hmm. matched. So it's and uh, spoiler warning, uh, he has drawn into two copies of Nibiru, so <laughs> he does have that option for him. So now he is gonna go for again pretty much the shape brigading of the deck, yeah. which as you can see here is the new the trap tricks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is very good because basically this can be used in the same turn the card was set. So basically it's uh, it another extender, and uh, yeah, what a turn uh, here from. Uh, yeah, from as Grand. I mentioned, uh, this deck might look like a trap deck, but as you can see here, he ended with no traps face down actually, mm -hmm. but with. Uh, just a uh, lot of XYZ monsters and the option of the Redoer, which is extremely nice because, as you can see, he always makes it with the trap, meaning it's essentially a Phoenix Wing Wing Blast uh, uh, in form of XYZ monster. Let's see here if Sean uh, will be happy with this, but he starts things off with an Infinite Impermanence on the Time Thief Redoer, which is already something to start things with. And uh, we have seen already in YCS Leon how consistent Kashtira deck is, and uh, it's very difficult to play against it. But yeah, I think it makes sense to chain the time. Yeah, you you're forced it. to chain it, and now you are uh, pretty much exposed. But uh, a lot of players, pretty much, I would say that the Kashtira deck at the moment has two options either to play as a kind of a Zodiac deck, realizing only on a Rise Art and nothing else, or it can go all out. And the reason is behind. Pretty much about Nibiru, yeah. And Ben is maining it, and I don't think you expect it, especially in trap tricks. So uh, that might be a factor in this game one. Let's see. So the issue with Nibiru, of course, uh, as you mentioned, is an extremely powerful card to counter the Cash Tira deck. Um, personally, I feel like in this current meta game, just because of the sort of I don't want to say dominance, but you know the uh, just the existence of Sprite. You know, it's a very yeah. popular and common deck. I would be very hesitant to main deck Nibiru. Do you think, in this type of situation, do you think that you would ignore Nibiru in game one, or are you always going to be hesitant? I think uh, you might just ignore it. Uh, to be fair, uh, at the same time, I gotta say, Trap Tricks is not the most popular deck. Uh, but I, I was just, uh, you know, roaming around, looking at some of the deck profiles that have been released in the past weeks. Uh, and uh, some of the most successful trap tricks did main Nibiru. So if uh, Sean did his, uh, his homework, so maybe he knows that Nibiru might be there, especially when your opponent is playing trap tricks and he doesn't set anything and he has three cards in his hand. Like, you could expect multiple monsters or at least, uh, you know, Ash Blossom, something like that. So, but in general, I would say you just ignore Nibiru game one. So I think it's an extremely powerful deck going first with be able to just use these two card combos to set up a lot of uh, trap cards. Unfortunately, we didn't draw that many here, but you know, this you know, we had the uh, disruption, the effect of the redoer. We were uh, completely set up for the next turn. We have our protection. Uh, but I suppose one of the biggest key main weaknesses of the trap tricks decks is definitely going to be going second. So that's why I think opting to main deck those answers, those really powerful field removing uh, options with the evenly matched and the, the Nibiru. Yeah, and the evenly matched is uh, really good in general, of course, but in this deck uh, it's better than in others because as we saw with the Trap Tricks uh, new trap card, you need to discard the trap so you can just discard the evenly and it's not going to be a dead card going uh, first, for example. Still a decent amount of synergy there, yeah, yeah. it works, works quite well. Alright, so Theosis is going for the Scareclaw. 
Typically, you want to go for Rise Heart. Any yeah. reason you think that we went Might for have it in his hand. Yeah. He's just yeah. trying to play through, but now we should count the summons as well. We are on three summons mm. at the moment. And, uh, yeah, I don't think Sean uh, is going to... No, let's see. Could still play around it. That's why maybe he didn't go for the Rise Heart. Removing a exit on nice. from the exit. That nice. is a classic. What it's been a, a while since we said, yeah. yeah. Legacy of the Valiant 2014, I believe. It was for an Exiton Knight. Yeah. What a card it was. <laughs> yeah, once per chain. That was... Uh, yeah, that was insane. One of, the, one of the first times we had, like, a quick effect removal yeah. like that. All right, so making quick work of the field here and uh, removing all of Ben's options. Now, yeah. I suppose the last final critical moment of this and the decision-making is how far does he keep going now? Because actually this might be the fourth summon because the f at the beginning of the duel he had the unicorn that got stolen so actually i think we are on four summons and this might be the fifth already so let's see uh, yeah he's gonna play conservatively in a way with the arise art for free which i mentioned is pretty much the way you play the deck similarly to zodiac just rely relying on uh, your boss monster Pot of Prosperity, a interesting choice to use in main phase two rather than maybe main phase one. Yeah, I mean, that. it's it's decent because uh, some players have been using Garura, which is why this makes sense. Because uh, when it resolves, it's going to get banished, triggering the Rise Art, and you can get back the Garura from uh, the banished zone. And whenever they deal with the Rise Art, then that's your plus one. Uh, we can check whether Ben is playing that or some other interesting targets in the action. Uh, not Ben, Sean. So yeah. I see what you're saying, he's uh, trying to have that synergy with the yeah. attach effect of the Rise Heart, but I was just maybe curious, you know, you want to like see I your in options, In general, I agree right? with you, yeah. in general I agree with you, but just if he's playing the Garura, yeah, he's playing. yeah he is, yeah. so mm -hmm. makes sense. Uh, and it decides and to go for this a... This is exactly... Yeah, okay, no. Ah, okay. going Ooh, for the okay, Goliath, yeah, yeah. One. I mean, still similar concept. Yeah. He's still the fourth summer, right? Yeah. Uh, I actually think it might be the fifth, because at the beginning he went for a Unicorn. And I think it yep. was, yeah, yeah. There it so is. it is the fifth. Yep, and this is what we are going to go through. And, and I think this uh, was totally yeah. unexpected, as we mentioned. Absolutely. Uh, I think if you, if you are a cash player players this week, and uh, as we have also seen the last week, and also the UK Open champion, yeah. I mean, uh, you just want to go and push as, as much as you can, and then if you get punished, you just deal with that. And here, for example, you could see why uh, putting one of those cards. Unfortunately, even if you use the Garura here, it would be even more punished because of uh, Prosperity, because uh, that would uh, not allow you to draw a card for Garura. But, yep. Yeah. Now, plays back, so Redura comes back. Let's so see. a decent amount of recursion despite this. You know, you would think like Nibir the Primal Being coming down, it's a very, very sort of powerful, almost mm -hmm. game-ending card in and of itself. But the ability to kind of still be able to set up a Fenrir here, you have Birth for next turn, so it's still a lot for Ben to contend with and try to remove these resources away from, uh, from Sean here uh, just to make sure that he doesn't have a chance to come back on the turn five. Yeah. All right, so Sweet. this is the new Trap Checks monster here, Arak no Kampa, going to be used to immediately link summon into Sarah. And here, we're going to try and trigger... Yep, there it is. This was uh, utilized last turn here, going for this similar combo here. And that is, yeah. as you mentioned, a very similar card to Shade Brigadine, allowing you to trigger this... Oh, okay. okay. Interesting. Yeah, and this well, yeah. is Sarah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, so despite this, uh, the Sarah still will activate. And Mermelio yeah. activating the mandatory effect to destroy <laughs> a spell and trap card in the field. And removing that birth is extremely, extremely critical to be able to stop Sean from coming back with any sort of uh, play on the following turn. You mentioned it. 2014, Mermelio in action, and now back almost after 10 years. Still again at the top tables. And uh, yeah, but Sarah is the MVP by far. It's such a good. Uh, Link one, and now we see one of uh, again the new ones, uh, the Link Chu uh, Kularia, I believe. Yeah. Yep. Generally, this is what you try and go for on turn two here, so you can actually start mounting an offensive. Trap Trick, of course, a very defensive deck yeah. in the way that it sets up the field to be able to stop the opponent from summoning powerful monsters. And I think uh, now that we've dealt with the Nibiru, uh, that is a really, really good position for Ben. And his opponent is now just uh, basically dealing with a top deck at this stage. 
Yeah, this uh, really is an upfield battle. There is another Nibiru, by the way, waiting in the end from that. <laughs> so, just in case. But yeah, here we see the flag Flaggate gate trouble. Yeah. Really good card in a lot of formats, like even on uh, Duel Links, it was uh, dominating uh, World Championships uh, an event. But yeah, congratulations to Ben for winning this game one. It seems like he had uh, a pretty good but unusual opening with no face down trap card on turn one from Trap Tricks, but it was enough. Then Ibiru was the, definitely the MVP. So maybe his decision is paying off. I think going first there, like I mentioned, is extremely important, yeah. you know, being able to set up those trap tricks. But, but despite that, he didn't actually have access to too many of those trap cards, did no, he? No, no, but the thing is that, uh, I mean, the Nibiru was the game changer. Because yeah. uh, you don't really expect people to play Nibiru in the main deck, and then if, if they have it, you just get punished and deal with that. Uh, honestly, I think that the trap tricks decks, as we mentioned, I think it's very consistent. Because basically, with just a couple of cards, he was able to come back, not only once, but then, you know, put pressure and deal, basically clear the entire yeah. field. And then going to game two, honestly, if I were Sean, I would be scared because basically after what I saw, you have to play around Nibiru and then basically you could be prepared also against other types of matchups, not against Raptors. So it's not going to be easy, but he has some key tools in his side deck, which uh, we might be saying soon. I think the Solemn Judgment could be a solid choice by going first in For general sure. and also the Cosmic Cyclones are good. And uh, I think uh, of the of them both, I think Ben is more prepared in a sense that uh, he's built his deck. Even if going second, he has three Cobble of Evil Image, three Biro, three Permanence, three Ash Blossom. He has a lot of cards. Yeah. Just on the concept of side decking here, I'm just wondering, you know, when you're in this kind of situation and you've seen the Biro in game mm -hmm. one, and now you sort of ask yourself, uh, do I take it out now uh. that my opponent has seen my Nibiru? Does the opponent continue to play into it? There's almost that little mind game dynamic going on I there, agree. isn't there? It's uh, it's interesting. I think it really depends on what kind of deck you're playing. Uh, on the one hand, I like it in uh, these kind of trap-heavy decks because uh, usually you're able to deal with uh, just the Arise Art alone. So maybe that's kind of a mind game. It's like your opponent wants to go all out uh, and maybe locks uh, even your spell and trap zone instead of the monster zone. Uh, but then if you're playing free evenly and free Nibiru, you know, maybe even Lava Golems in the side, Dex Fear mode, whatever, these kind of cards, obviously it's uh, it's very tricky for your opponent. Uh, and it doesn't surprise me that most of Ben side deck is for going second. So let's see how it goes. Maybe we could even be surprised and Sean uh, makes Ben go first. Well, let's see. However, our players are ready, so let's jump back into game two. So as mentioned here, Sean is going to have the opportunity to choose whether to go first or second. Very likely you want to go first, and now we can see and yeah. his opening hand. <laughs> but the Nibiru is back, baby, and uh, alongside an impermanent, so... Was that just a pass? Wow! Did he pass? Yeah, oh he just passed. Brutal. Yeah, wow. that's, that's really, really rough. He does have Feather Duster, but... Yeah, completely bricked. Uh, he has a Ghost Mourner, which could be nice to slow things down, but a brick is brutal at this point. Well, I must say that that is obviously not an ideal situation you want to be in. However, Trap Tricks not particularly known for its ability to end the game so fast. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I, th I think you're always just going to be scared here that we're going to have a lot of ways to set up. This is a very good mourner on this Sarah, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Mourner, uh, yeah, interesting, uh, interesting option. Uh, we have seen it very popular in Kashtira instead of cards like Veiler, mainly because it's a level three tuner, so you can normal summon it to make Baron really easily, and it, it's a decent card. I agree. I wonder if you <laughs> miss that era and this period of Yu-Gi-Oh, where your hand traps were tuners that you could either use as disruption or normal summon to the field and combine for some combo plays. Those were, uh, yeah, those were the days. Especially oh, Goki. So Goki was on top of my mind, I remember. Yeah. Not only because of tuners, but because they were, uh, you know, level three for uh, uh, some XYZ plays. So, yeah. And yeah, like Saber Invoker. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. The boy. All right, uh, a couple of options going second. Sometimes I've seen a couple of Trap Tricks players play Utopia double with double or nothing to be able to <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, deal 8,000 damage when your opponent has a monster on the field with at least or at the most 2,000 yeah. attack. Uh, that has been a common strategy of Trap Tricks, but not really something that I think they've been doing post-structure yeah. deck era. He's just attacking, it seems like. Uh, yeah. And uh, might go for Redoer again or some uh, XYZ play, let's see. I think Redoer is particularly powerful when you can 
combine it with a trap card yeah, as a material here, but I think uh, good old Rafflesia yeah, is sense. extremely good. Rafflesia being able to get any trap card from the deck, can't yeah. you? Yeah. But what Ben doesn't know is that Sean has the Arcus Feather Duster in yep. hand. So, so if if there is a solid top deck, uh, this could change everything. Because uh, I saw there was a Theosis in the end. Yeah, uh, I think he's missing one piece. But no, he drew I think the big, big bang. Yeah. yeah, that's brutal. Oh my. Yeah, still gonna go for the Feather Duster. This is gonna be a little bit odd without any follow-up. I'm hoping there's something that he can do. Yeah. Despite this. Because otherwise we might have a quick one. Because now, as mentioned, you get a plus one. Actually, a plus two, potentially. So... Yeah, so the Trap Check Sarah, because a Trap Card was activated. As mentioned, she's going to be able to activate and special summon a Trap Tricks monster from the deck. And okay. that's Just Mermelio. You, maybe. And because of the fact that, again, mentioned the, the mandatory effect of Mermelio activating to destroy a spell and trap card in the field trick is the secondary effect of Trap Trick Sarah, which then gets you a new trap card. Now, the disadvantage, you can't use it on the turn it's set. Yep. So if there's any way for Sean to play here, then he should be able to try oh, okay. and ah, draw okay. the Fender. Defender. But okay. I, yeah, I don't think this is enough. Here. You yeah. get the floodgate trap yep. wall, uh, and uh, yeah. Sean uh, is pretty much stuck at this point. Uh, I mean, as you mentioned, Ben, former national champion, you can really see it. Uh, he's super comfortable with the deck, not even thinking that much. Uh, he knows what he wants to go for. Mm. And yeah, here it's... Uh, a piece of cake, I think, to just end <laughs> this uh, duel. A wealth of experience with Ben Sherman, and I suppose it also comes down with the deck building as well, you know, being able to use yep. those Nibiru's in the main deck, deciding that that was the optimal way to build this deck, especially going into not quite a dominant Cash Tira format, but obviously popular nonetheless. And now he's trying to find a path to game here to be able to close this one out. So, I mean, Floodgate Trap Hole, absolutely incredible card. You may remember this from particularly at the beginning of Master Rule 4, when yeah. you would activate this on a monster in the extra monster zone. That was uh, yeah, that's very detrimental. A way to shut down everything in Zodiac format. Yeah. Yep. New Floodgate Trap Hole acquired here. Should he wow. not be able to end up the game? And yeah, this, this might is be impressive. Enough. Yeah. Again, we mentioned it. Oh, this is kind of a trap deck, but. I don't think Ben likes this definition. You can really see it. Both <laughs> games, he had more monsters than traps, to be fair. And yeah, yeah. There you see it. it. Fist bomb, and it is burned. Who takes it? Two and oh. So. What a match and what a convincing show of dominance from uh, from Ben. I mean, uh, not much we can say. Uh, as mentioned, uh, this might be a deck that not many people are familiar with. Uh, it was, uh, again, uh, released uh, uh, quite recently from the structure deck, uh, but I think uh, it's convincing. Yeah, I think even despite the fact that he didn't really open all of those like set five typical yeah. standard thing you would expect from a trap deck, he was still able to uh, completely dominant and control that game. No, but I really like that, especially starting things off with the Purika itself and then putting up the yeah. the Sarah on the field. It's just uh, puts you so far ahead in the game. And uh, I think it showed us how powerful the deck is and also how it counters the Kashtira deck, which might be one of the top uh, pick deck of the of this weekend. So maybe, maybe we'll see. I mean, there are a few trap decks, and uh, we mentioned our. Uh, some plenty of times Alberto is a fan in general of trap decks, uh, except when he has to name them uh, for a quid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think in general of uh, this kind of strategy? Are you a fan? Are you more of the combo-oriented player, if those even exist, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, milling and special summoning is obviously going to be uh, <laughs> something a little bit more enjoyable that I partake in, I think. But I think the most important and critical thing here with the Trap Tricks deck is that Rise Heart is such a polarizing monster yeah. in this format. And the sort of ma banish continuous macrocosmos mm -hmm. effect, not that relevant against Trap Tricks, is no. it? No, in indeed. I mean, uh, also, we saw only one time the Rise Heart being summoned and then, you know, the Nibiru was there. Yep. Uh, but I think what the deck really does is uh, having all these trap cards in your deck to stop uh, one single play of your opponent because, of course, Kashtira relies on, you know, having the monsters on the field. So uh, the, the, all these trap tricks effects, I mean, in the end paid off. And uh, I mean, still, this is the third round, a lot of rounds to go yet. And 
I like Ben's approach, though, of the deck. I mean, if he goes second, he has a lot of options. And as mm -hmm. we saw, uh, I think, in my opinion, the deck is built to go second in general, also by looking at his side deck. I think he can do well, especially also against other type of matchups. So definitely could be interesting. Uh, I think it, it kind of reminds me of when, uh, you know, YCS Las Vegas uh, Labyrinth was showing really well and he reached the finals. Uh, but it's a trap deck where monsters are good, but monsters alone are not enough to win. And so you could see in the past weeks throughout, uh, you know, regionals and other events where people started to play cards like Feather Duster. And maybe this is where Ben, you know, stepped it up a notch uh, and now he plays a deck where you do have traps, but you have also cards like Rafflesia, which don't really care about your Feather Dusters. So let's see, though, because uh, thank you guys for being with us for round three. This was a pleasure to enjoy, but before we head out, we want to hear it from the winner, Ben, alongside Ed. Thank you very much, Marcello. Yes, I am joined by Ben Sherman, who's just won that with his Trap Trick Stick, our round three feature match, the fist there. So like we said in the intro, you're the 2014 UK national champion, and here you are, almost 10 years later, working your way through YCS London. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling OK, just trying it out. So every deck's really weird right now. There's no clear best deck, so I just play what you find fun. Absolutely. So obviously you were up against Kashtira, which is quite a dominant and slightly feared deck by some people. No, not at all. God, you just handled that with confidence. So we're going to go through some of these matches, but obviously you just you just shook your head at me there, which means you're not too worried about it. Were you actually pretty confident the second you realized it was Kashtira? Uh, yeah, so I played Kashtira up until a couple of weeks ago, so I knew like the ins and outs of the deck. Uh, so I knew what it did, and I know it has a quite a hard match against Trap Tricks specifically just because of the Floodgate Trap Hole. So which did come up actually at one point in game two. And we'll get to that in just a moment. So let's go through game one. So obviously there was the Arise Heart on field, but because of a couple of things that came out in five summons, which means you had the Nibiru straight away. I was wondering why, why Sean didn't trigger the Arise Heart before Nibiru hit the field, because there was, a, there was an interaction that could have happened there. But either way, you managed to clear the field and you took that game one because he just couldn't do anything. So at that point, you've already said that you've been playing Kashtir, as you know how it works. Were you feeling pretty confident? Oh yeah, definitely. So um, I decided on playing the beer. It's a bit of a meta call because the scenario is weird. The game people make a rise out and four summons usually, but playing into a board, you can just usually end on Serra and Redoer. Redoer gets rid of itself; it comes back. Serra, you can bring with the traps. You end on the same board, but clear all their board, so they're forced to play through. But yeah, once the Nibiru comes down and I get to play, then um, once I'm established, I'm fine. Excellent. And then we got into game two. So. I mean, you started with a Nibiru in hand, so if that same interaction happened with the summaries, and instead of four, it was five summons, you were already ready. By the looks of it, Sean bricked straight away, so slightly difficult start for him. There was that Harpy's Feather Duster on your back row, but you had the, now I never know how to say it, is it Hol U-T-A? How do you say it? Uh, I say Holotea. I might, I might be wrong, I don't know. It's just, I just read it. So yeah, the Duster was strong. Um, I could have searched Aratna Camper. Uh, to protect from Duster, but I wasn't really worried too much about it because I only lose effectively one card. Uh, and then I can carry on playing, and like you say, it didn't happen too well, so... And then, yeah, I mean, that really helped you just build quite a dominant defensive field already. And then, as you mentioned earlier, the Floodgate Trap Hole, which instantly faced down that Fenrir, so you were putting an instant stop to everything that was going to happen, couldn't go into the combo, and you just you just took it there. So, you feeling you feeling pretty confident now at this point? Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Um, the deck has a lot of versatility and can deal with a lot of different things. As you saw there with the Puddicker interaction, I can just clear things and then you can do saucy stuff with Alamaris, bring it back and just, it's a bit cheeky stealing that stuff. <laughs> Anything you're worried about going up against in the upcoming Swiss rounds? Uh, Labyrinth is actually kind of hard because it can search Eradicator, which if they just go first and search Eradicator, it's like, <laughs> sure, I'm a trap deck. <laughs> Well, let's hope you don't go up against that before you get to that top cut. But who knows? Anything could happen in this. Congratulations again, our 2014 UK national champion working through that third round here at YCS London. Don't go anywhere because in just a moment, we're going to be back with a quiz while we wait for round four. Don't go anywhere.